Good day YouTube, my name is Dan and welcome to another episode of CryptoLite. Hardware wallets are considered the safest place to store our cryptocurrency and the Ledger Nano S is arguably the most popular hardware wallet on the market. But all that may have changed today when a 15 year old boy posted a blog explaining how he hacked the supposedly unhackable Ledger Nano. To discover the who, what, when, where and how of this news, keep watching this video. The 15-year-old boy's name is Salim Rashid and he's a genius. He's a self-taught programmer and last year he actually discovered a hack into Trezor's hardware wallet as well, which he promptly informed Trezor and the issue was promptly solved with the two parties working closely together. He received high commendation from Trezor, who said of him, I'm thankful to Spiderware for his contributions to Trezor project. His out-of-the-box thinking and creative approach helps to make us an even more secure product. This experience only proves that community-oriented and open-source development is the correct path to take. At the age of 15 years old, besides contributing to the open-source Trezor firmware, he has also worked as a contractor for NAM official to implement NAM support for Trezor. So this boy is the real deal. I mean, at 15 years old, I was sitting at McDonald's eating french fries and wasting my life. But at the same age, this boy is finding backdoors into hardware and software that experts are calling unhackable. It's very impressive. Now, actually, Salim discovered the hack early last November and he informed Ledger immediately about it. However, Ledger didn't inform the community and took four months before releasing a firmware update and only two days ago did Ledger release a write-up and a proof of concept. According to Salim, communications with them had been very slow, so definitely not the experience that he had with Trezor. But the bit that upset him was when the CEO of Ledger responded publicly to the concerns on Reddit calling Salim a massive fad and claiming that the vulnerabilities requires a set of incredibly unlikely conditions. The conditions he posted included installing a custom version of the MCU firmware, installing a malware on the target's computer and have him confirm a very specific transaction. Now, none of this is true. I will go through with you very soon how the hack was done. So basically Salim saw this post and he contacted Ledger about the CEO's inaccurate statement and then he was informed that the CEO had not at all been in briefed about the security vulnerability when they made these comments on Reddit. So they themselves admitted to him that the Reddit post information was wrong. However, they did not apologize or make a public correction to warn the community that this information was wrong. So this really upset Salim, who then decided not to accept a bounty from Ledger as it would include a disclosure agreement that would prevent him from disclosing the report. But rather, he decided to make a post on it to properly explain to users what the heck is and to warn them of the potential vulnerability in the product. The detailed technical details of the hack is described in this post, which I will post the link of the description below. It's very technical and any layman will struggle to understand it. So let me try and give you a gist of how it happened in simple terms. This is the software layout of a Ledger Nano. We will understand a few of the boxes like the USB host, the buttons that we press, as well as the OLED. The core of the Nano though is these two microprocessors called here as the MCU and the SE. Now the SE or secure element is the security bit of the Nano software that does the encryption etc. And this is the bit of the Nano that is unhackable. However, the SE itself does not support displays. So to make it usable for us, the MCU then is the middleman software that helps the security element, the SE, to communicate with the peripherals. However, the MCU is non-secure and can be hacked to provide the SE with false information. This is the backdoor. But the Nano has another layer of security which requires the user to push buttons to confirm passwords. So another hack was needed to complete the exploit. So basically, together, these two hacks, one is at the MCU and the other is at the user confirmation hardware, which is where you press the buttons to confirm the password, basically allow a flow where first the SE is provided with false information and secondly, the manual authenticating tool is then provided with another set of false informations to allow the hacker to authenticate himself. There is an attached video on the post that shows how Salim literally changed all the passwords to the same word abandoned. So it was very easy for the hacker to break into the device. It is both scary and impressive to see the video. 
So as you can see, it doesn't actually require anything that the Ledger CEO claims he needed. Example, a malware on the computer, the user to make a specific transaction or a custom version of the MCU. What it does require though, is for the actual Ledger Nano to have at some point been in the hands of the hacker. Now you might think this is impossible and you wouldn't hand your ledger over to anyone but unfortunately this case is not hard because unless you bought the ledger from the ledger website themselves there is no way to guarantee that your product has been untempered because of the demand the website actually runs out of stock a lot and a lot of people buy their ledgers from third-party sellers through amazon or ebay now, other hardware wallets come with a security seal to show that the product has not been tampered with. But with Ledger, the biggest company for hardware wallets, they don't. Their product simply comes in a box that's wrapped with a layer of plastic that is easily reproducible. And they explain in the product that the reason they have no anti-tempering sticker is because Ledger itself is tamper-proof. Unfortunately, now that it's been proven that it's not, the absence of a simple security sticker could have compromised thousands of wallets. It's a real shame that Ledger has not been more open or quick to respond to this hack that Salim tried to warn them about. Because over the last few months, even on YouTube, you can see many postings of people who have been scammed with their Ledger Nano. Here you can see 34,000 hacked from Ledger Nano S two months ago. Uh, another one, scam Ledger Nano S wallet bought on eBay hack. This was also two months ago. So it was all within the time frame that Salim had tried to warn them about the hack. Another thing that Ledger hasn't done well is the actual patch update. Now I had a hard time updating my Ledger two weeks ago when it first came out and apparently I wasn't the only one. It's been over two weeks since the patch has been released and if you go on their Reddit website today, you see that it is still being flooded with comments of people who are still struggling with updating their Ledger. Just in the top 15 posts of today, currently, right now, you see um, posts that read, Ledger stuck on update and Ledger manager has default to begin connect your Ledger wallet. This is actually the same problem that I struggled with. I should probably go out and post to help this guy after this. The next is firmware update 1.4.1 update stuck on update screen. Um, Ledger screen frozen after update. Ledger not able to open any application not even the Ledger manager for updating my device. And there's lots and lots more of such comments if you just go through the reddits, okay? In the first hundred, at least like half of the posts are all about uh, people struggling with um, doing the update. It's really scary because this is a critical security update. And ignoring the technical difficulties of updating the update itself, the, the way that Ledger disclosed or released the information to his community was also not well done. Salim pointed this out in his blog. He said, when you fix a critical security issues, you can take one of two routes. The first is to completely seal the security fix. Now, this is an effective method to avoid drawing the attention of malicious hackers called black hats. But this has the downside that most users will avoid updating, especially if the process is very painful to do, as was in this case. The second option would be to alert users of a critical security issues and force an update. And this is commonly used for open source problems or when the vendor suspects a security vulnerability is being used in the wild. However, this has the downside that it does also alert the malicious hackers of the presence of a vulnerability. Therefore, it's essential that users update immediately to gain the first mover advantage over a potential hacker. Ledger, in this case, however, chose a very flawed method of releasing the update, which took the worst aspects of both of these approach. By drawing the attention to the security fixes in their firmware update by saying that this is an important update, while they didn't actually alert the users to the details of the update, they lost the first mover's advantage and because the update was so difficult to implement even to today, many users still have not updated their software. Now this would have given the malicious hackers sufficient time, plenty of time to determine how to exploit the vulnerability, putting all users at risk of the malware attack vector, especially those who have bought their ledgers from third-party companies recently. And his concern has proven correct because recently he has been contacted by multiple independent whiteheads who had determined the issue purely from Ledger's firmware update instructions. So he didn't tell them about it, he didn't alert them, but 
white hats who uh white hats is a slang for non-malicious or ethical hackers so they are people like salim people who specialize in finding penetration weakness but they warn the companies about it rather than exploit it so a lot of these individual smart people out there noticed and were able to find the loophole just based on the information the limited information that uh, ledger released to the public but of course the normal people like you and me we didn't get it but these people did so all they managed to do in being cryptic about the update was to alert the hackers that there was a vulnerability that the hackers could find but the rest of us were in the dark and we had no idea what was going on so i got to admit after reading all of this today i am very concerned Ledger Nano is the biggest crypto hardware wallet. The next biggest is the company Trezor. Now I use Ledger personally, but after reading about this hack and how they responded to it, which in my opinion lacks transparency or courage and honesty, I have lost confidence in the company, more in their morals rather than the product. I can accept that the product is not perfect, you know, no product in the world is perfect, no blame, but I can't accept the fact that they hid it from me as a user and refused to correct a very inaccurate misleading post on a public channel like reddit my thoughts about what we can do from here are the following number one make sure you update your software number two follow the latest news in case someone does release a way to check if your device has been tampered with or some other new discovery about this um, important news the third is buy only from verified sources. eBay is a consumer to consumer purchase and it is not a verified res uh, source. For those who have already bought a ledger from a third party, if you can check whether or not they are a verified company with the ledger uh, company. The third is lastly, you don't have to do this, but personally, I'm going to consider alternatives. Example, Trezor. I haven't done enough research to recommend any product to anyone. But I like the fact that Trezor didn't get defensive last year when the flaw in their product was pointed out, but rather they worked swiftly with the one who pointed it out to make their product a better product. So they are a product that I am going to check out for my personal interest. Let me know if Hardware Wallet Reviews is a post that you might be interested in, and if I can, I'll do a post on it. I will say this in advance though, I'm not sure that my tech knowledge on this topic will be sufficient to do a good review because I can take a white paper of a blockchain project and break it down into simple explanations because that's the information that has been given to me. But I can't foresee how to take advantage of potential loopholes in a wallet tech like a hacker. And you would have to be a hacker to get that level of insight, which unfortunately I'm not. So I'm not very confident in terms of my tech knowledge in giving a solid review on this topic. But nonetheless, if you guys want a review on it, we will do our best to research and give you our personal opinions and share our own journey and thoughts with on this matter with you. After all, that's what this channel is for. So that's it for me, guys. Thank you so much for joining us. If you found this post helpful and liked it, please give us a like and subscribe so you don't miss out on any of our content. Also, let us know if there are any coins or topics you would like us to cover. And if we can cover it, we will, because this channel is ultimately made just for you. So have a great day wherever you are, and we will catch you guys tomorrow.